Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about my fragrance Hall of Fame perfume. Whoever has seen that video knows already that in the top, top, top levels of perfumery, to me, goes uh, this little baby here. Poison by Christian Dior. It's so black, it's reflecting light like crazy. You probably won't be able to see it anyway. I'm going to talk about the history of Poison. This is going to be a long video, so stay tuned and get ready for um, a poisonous uh, and delicious fruity, ambery review. Uh, Poison was launched in 1985 by the house of Christian Dior, and it, it is the epitome of powerhouse perfumery of the 80s. It is intense, strong, and as the word says, poisonous at times. People either love it or hate it. Mind you, I'm talking to you right now about the pre-reformulated version, which is this one. Uh, this is the Esprit de Parfum, and um, let's get into the notes first before I start describing everything. Top notes, Brazilian rosewood, anise, wild berries, plum, coriander. Then we go to the middle notes, opoponax, tuberose, African orange flower, jasmine, carnation, and you know I love my carnation. Moving on still to the wild, uh, to the middle notes, the middle wild notes. White honey, rose, incense, cinnamon. Base notes, amber, Virginia cedar wood, sandalwood, musk, vetiver, you name it, they got it. Heliotrope and vanilla. It's crazy. And uh, the nose behind it is Edouard Fleschier. Now, when Poison hit the market, it literally exploded like a bomb. It exploded like a bomb. And uh, everybody wore it. I mean, the streets of, of Paris, Milan, New York, darling, everything, Rome, were just, just, just fled with the, with the smell of Poison. That's how crazy the marketing was, and that's how crazy the success of this perfume was. Today, the success has mellowed, those crazy 80s times, times of freedom and happiness and, you know, free thinking and just thoughtless fun have passed, are long gone. People have moved on to be a bit more safe. Uh, fashion houses have moved on to become more bourgeois, if you want, and, and just safe. Everybody's playing it safe. This horrible word that should never be never be attached to fashion and and the conception of, of cosmetics and perfumery safe this horrible word safe is now the ruler it's the ruler supreme it's the it's the emperor the dictator of the fashion world nowadays this is so saddening to me but that's why we have this little channel with super deco where we can reminisce of these crazy bits of history that uh allowed us to dream more than ever this right here is, was never available for purchase because it is a 100 milliliter spray bottle. Um, as you can see in the back, you probably won't be able to because of all the reflection, but it says that, um, it's impossible, right? Let me read it for you guys. So it says that, uh, a piece, fruit, spicy, fruity, amber notes, demonstration, not for sale. This is just a tester, 100 milliliter, 76% alcohol. Now, poison was available in many, many different concentrations. The first launch was this bottle, you probably all remember, Poison Esprit de Parfum, with 76% alcohol. Then we have the... <laughs> You're gonna go... <laughs> Slowly I'm picking up all the bottles you don't want to know. Like, down here is like an ocean of bottles. I wanted to, to kind of counter the, the shape and, and the presentation I did for Chanel number no. 5. You could check that... Uh, review out as well. But uh, Chanel number no. 5 began with a big stand here of Chanel. This time I want to do it as we move along. The more we move along, the more you're going to realize the quantity of all these, uh, of the Christian Dior production. Because they didn't all hit the market at the same time. They slowly started hitting the market. So I'm going to slowly kind of build up the collection as we go along in this video. This is also a sample that I got. I got all of these um, either from you know, I would walk around at my travels through um, 
perfume resellers or sellers or retailers and would always ask if they would sell their samples or give me away their samples as they moved on with the reformulations of the perfumes, if anybody had anything left, or secondhand uh, auction houses too. Now, uh, as far as the eau, de parf the eau de toilette, so we have Esprit de Parfum, 76% alcohol, 84.5% alcohol is the eau de toilette. This was the bottle for the eau de toilette. This was the bottle for the Esprit de Parfum. This tester didn't have a stopper on it, but I don't know if you could see a little gold inscription there that says... Yeah, you don't see it. 84.5%. Now, then Poison also launched an Eau de Cologne, and the Eau de Cologne had a 93.5% alcohol concentration, and the bottle is much lighter, as you can see here. Much, much, much lighter, more transparent, but still we have that typical purpley, see we go from dark to a bit lighter, and then to the lightest. Now, there was also, let me see if I have it here, after the Eau de Cologne, which was considered by many still too strong, uh, after the Eau de Cologne, I think there is a version here. Yes, I have it right here. My collection is very big, so stay, bear with me. This is the packaging for Poison Christian Dior. It is a beautiful, dark, intense green moiré. Uh, print to you know, it's like a dark intense green lighter green tones black and gold and that's how this box is Look at the luxury of Christian Dior poison back in the 80s This is how much attention they they gave to these boxes and to the packaging how beautiful this is now in this This is uh, the Eau de Cologne light uh, wait, What does it say? It's a light Cologne now this is the lighter version of the cologne we just saw. And let me show you this little baby. So this is a beautiful splash version of the perfume. It's not a spray, so it has its stopper. It's beautiful glass stopper. And that's the bottle. And this is a, ah, very important. But we'll get to that in a second. Now, you, this option here, it, well, option, the possibilities you have here are many. So, what you could do is, uh, you get a little spray, and you get a little refill thing here. So, you could pour in the 50 milliliter, or part of the 50 milliliter liquid in the Eau de Cologne Light. You could pour it into the into this little thing and it's already it's already basically it was full so that's another really cool thing when you used to purchase these products these bottles were full and so were so was this one so basically you would get 50 ml plus 7.5 ml so you would get 57.5 ml once you finish using this one up you can refill it and that is the bottom of the bottle it says eau de cologne light Perfumes Christian Dior. I'm not going to spray it yet. I'm going to spray the Esprit de Parfum, of course. And for a very rare, you know, there was also kind of a couple of very limited edition pieces as well, uh, which I will show to you in a second. But the, for the lucky few, I keep this in, in this box. This is not an original Christian Dior box. For the lucky few that have seen this, and this is a mythological creature, many believe it not to exist at all. It does exist um, in different formats, believe it or not. The pure perfume, the parfum of Poison Christian Dior, extremely rare. Many believe it to have never existed, but guess what? It did exist. Now, I have two versions of it. One version is plastic bottom, and then we have the cardboard top and the glossy moiré green print, says Parfum Christian Dior. 7.5 milliliters spray. You open it up like this. You have the beautiful matte Christian Dior inscription and you have your pure perfume here. Difference between this one and the other one, which I'm already losing. Here you have the Eau de Cologne and the perfume. So the Eau de Cologne has this like light gold and dark gold stopper and the pure perfume has a through and through moire print. 
So, this one is glued down there, basically, you cannot take it out. So once the 7.5 ml are empty, you're done for. You have to purchase the new Pure Perfume. Still full, this is like a holy grail for me, so I, 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 I wouldn't dare use it. Um, I don't know if I ever I will use it. I'm just extremely, extremely careful with this little baby. Um, it doesn't tell us the, you know, the percentages of uh, alcohol or not in here, but uh, it just says natural spray, poison, perfume, made in France. There you have it. And it's code. Some of you might be able to read this and know what year this was made. I've given up because every time I go to the websites that kind of promise you, according to the these little codes, tell you what year the perfumes were made. They're not always right with their dates, so I don't know. And then this one, which we can also take a peek in while we're at it, uh, is full on uh, cardboard and paper with a golden stripe on the side. Keep from heat or flame, because there's alcohol in here. <laughs> well, thank you, Christian Dior, for warning us. This one has a slightly different shaped bottle, more reminiscent of actually what real perfumes looked like back in the day. This is the Moiré fabric again printed with a golden frame this time, and we have the Christian Dior print. This one is a beautiful version. Here you have velvet on the inside. It is a gold, uh, gold, a glass bottle. This one is full. I don't know if you could see, really, you can't. But uh, this one is full. And we have this beautiful twisted dark purple, almost black glass. You have the poison inscription on the gold and you have your moiré, this, this time metal, lacquered and printed with moiré fabric print and then you have black on top with a golden circle and you take it off like that and you have your spray. So this is the most precious of the juices of the Christian Dior Poison family. Now, now, but as I said before, most people never really saw the pure perfume. I guess it was discontinued pretty soon as the Esprit de Parfum kind of kicked in and was selling way, way, way more than anything else. So pretty soon, uh, the Poison family began expanding. But before it began expanding, there was another limited edition that came out. Beautiful square box, uh, again with a more print, green shades, hues, we have black, gold, and this one is pretty interesting because you see there's gold underneath there. So when you lift it, you discover the actual gold. And this is a beautiful, beautiful golden poison bracelet in this velvet package. This is a glass bracelet. It's very, very fragile. It's a glass bracelet with glass stoppers. There is poison perfume inside of the bracelet, so you could kind of take off the stopper and you could, you know, let me take off my swatch. <laughs> the swatch fainted. It's too hot in here anyway. Okay, so let me try to put this on. So basically, this is your poison bracelet, and you could just take the stopper off and just pour it into any liquid and poison your lovers or whoever you want to. Um, this one is black glass with green prints all over it, reminiscent of the poison bottle in a way. And then on the back, you have a poison Christian Dior inscription. Very hard to see as we're playing with very dark colors here. Um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous collector's piece, I would say. It is the most interesting and one of the rarest pieces that I have ever seen from the Dior, from the Poison Saga, from the Poison Collection. So this is how it looks in its package. Let's not let it fall out. One last view, there you go. And look how well they, they did it back in the day. It also has this like soft padded semicircle there to block it so it doesn't move around when it's in the box. So as the, the popularity expanded, we got the body line the entire body collection. Now this was the beginning of the body collection. It has since then expanded and retracted and is now ridiculously, well, 
there's nothing left. Poison is just a reformulated version of itself. It's not as intense. It fades away immediately, and there's no body kind of line. There's no toiletries that, that go with it, which is a pity because these products were the bomb. Look how beautiful the artwork, the 80s artwork was with these purple hues and tones. And let me tell you what they used to have. Now, they used to have uh, the cream, the sumptuous cream, perfumed body cream with collagen, a voluptuous and emollient texture with exceptionally nourishing properties whose perfume has a remarkable intensity. This is it. <laughs> I have it here. But wait, before we go on, let me just spray this beautiful baby on so we get into my impressions because it's going to take a while for it. This one is kind of only up to here. The liquid is almost gone, which is very saddening to me. But this is the original pre-reformulated version. Oh. <laughs> if you get a chance, get the pre-reformulated one. You will not be disappointed. It's a whiff from the past, but it's just mesmerizing. Um, some of you have been asking me in the past how to uh, recognize a pre-reformulated and reformulated version. Well. Let me tell you, um, there are different ways of doing it. First of all, um, the actual Christian Dior logo is now gone. This Christian Dior thing is gone. It just says Poison Dior, uh, mostly. And let me just show you a soap bar from the future. I'll get to it in a minute, but it's, it, it, it's basically just going to say Dior. That's kind of Dior poison. And... Um, there's no more detail in the stoppers. The stoppers are much smaller, but the biggest, biggest difference is the pre-reformulated bottles have an older Christian Dior address on them with a different number. Now that's always important to see. So for example, uh, this bottle here, which is the original uh, uh, Esprit de Parfum sample or demonstra, how do you call it? I'm totally losing my words like a sample spray perfume um, in the back. And again, it's really hard to see because of the black, but I'll just read it to you guys. It's supposed to say Parfums Christian Dior 30, house number 30, Avenue Hoche or Hoche 75008 Paris. The reformulated ones are going to have, because the, the Maison or for the cosmetic department moved or the house number changed to 33. From 30, pre-reformulated, to 33. Chances that you have a reformulated version when you get an address 33 on your bottle are very high. So this one is Parfums Christian Dior 33 Avenue Hoche, uh, or Hoche uh, 75008, and the other one is 75008 as well, um, Paris. So 30, pre-reformulated, 33, most luckily reformulated. Now, moving back to the amazing line, uh, body line. So we have the Sumptuous Body Cream, which comes in this gorgeous bottle, glass. It's, it's beautiful. Um, collagen, 0.5%. That's sweet. They used to write. That was a big thing back in the 80s, the collagen quantities. So look at the thickness of this plexiglass. That's, this is so thick and heavy. They would never, ever, ever invest so much money into making this nowadays. Um, and then you would have this rubber soft thing, and then your cream would be in there. I do have one more of these with actual cream still inside. It still smells amazing after all those years. Probably not usable anymore after over 20 years, uh, but uh, or 30 years. <laughs> but uh, still, nevertheless, um, it smells amazing. But this is just an empty version of the bottle that I got way long ago. I mean, most of these, you know, I've been collecting these for like over 15 years. So um, I have quite a bit of these as reference. And then you just seal it off like that. Beautiful plastic stopper and gold around. This one got a bit dusty. I have to clean it and polish it. It says, perfumed body cream. Also extremely impossible to see here, I'm afraid. Maybe a little bit like that, you can see. Then, moving on, what does this little thing tell us? 
Perfumed body lotion, also with collagen, the comfort and freshness of a soft veil of perfume that protects and moisturizes. Uh, I have a gift set version here with me of the body milk. It came in this uh, gorgeous uh, plastic tube, also with a green moiré print all over it. And this one had also 0.5% collagen inside. I still have some cream in here made in France, and there you have the 30 address right over there. So hard to see guys there. 30 instead of 33. Yeah, this one is a bit off, but I mean, after 30 years, what do you expect? <laughs> but uh, definitely it's just worth seeing, so you know that also something like that existed. Moving on, we have the Eau Deodorant, so the deodor perfume deodorant and agreeable and lasting sensation of freshness and well-being together with the magic notes of poison. Now the deodorant I have, I didn't take with me out of my archive because there's like four boxes full of these that I still can't find. They're somewhere like totally buried in my archive. So the deodorant I can't show you, but I do have it as well. As in, it smelled as intense, basically, as the other toilet. It had a bit more alcohol in it, of course. Moving on, we have... Okay, this is amazing. So, perfumed talcum powder. Fleur de talc, fine and soft like the petal of a flower, leaves the body velvet smooth and subtly perfumed after the bath. I have two versions of it, believe it or not. I have a small 50 gram version and I have the Fleur de Talc talcum powder 100 gram version there so these two babies are incredible let's open it up and see you basically twirl it open and then you have your Talcum there. It smells amazing. It's like nothing you've ever smelled before. And of course, talcum never really, if you don't get it humid or, you know, if you don't mess with it too much, it's going to be fresh and last you forever. It smells amazing. It smells really, really, really amazing. So this is in a plastic, very, very thick plastic package. You can't squeeze it. You can't press it. Press it. Like that's how thick the plastic was back in the day. You know, plastics have become very expensive. They don't, nobody would ever produce such thick plastics for perfumes nowadays. Uh, this one is as well. You can't squish into them. They're very, very hard plastic. Great. How has this one developed? Ah, it's so dreamy. It just catapults you back into the 80s. It's incredible. Such a great perfume. Now we move to the perfumed soap, the, the Savon Precieux or whatever, Precious Soap. Uh, Savon Precieux or Precious Soap lathers to a rich emollient mousse which leaves the skin fresh and delicately perfumed. This, guys, is an incredible piece of art, I would say. The, the package for this baby is amazing. It's plastic, so you have your uh, Savon Precieux perfumed soap, and then you just lift the top. You have your beautiful little plastic stopper with gold all around it. And inside is the gorgeous perfumes Christian Dior. It's, what is it? 150 gram. And that's the soap bar still sealed in its original container and shape. You see the soap is also reminiscent of the bottle with the four claws kind of holding the bottle. And then on the inside, I still have the original little paper. These are so beautifully done. Pressed tissues with a gold trim line going around them. That's kind of harder to see. And then if you want, you could take out this part where the soap stands on so that the water can drip out of it after you've used it. 
So you could either leave your soap like this on your beauty counter or on, you know, close to the sink or wherever you have it, or you leave it in here, and then from time to time you take this out and you wash the, re the soap residue there, and then you can put your soap back in here. I mean, it's this is what luxury means to me. Like, something so unpractical and beautiful. Of course, could you imagine traveling with this? No, you can't really travel with it. It's so big and... It occupies so much space and it's so hard to envision um, anybody just throwing it into their weekender bag and flying with some easy jet or whatever, you know, those horrible flight companies are that are that try to trick you and steal as much money from you as possible from every kilo extra luggage you get. Like the, the 80s were not like that. Of course, flying was more expensive back in the day, but I have a feeling today flying is still very expensive that you just get way less for your money today than you used to back in the day. I remember flying to the States, you could do two luggages, like two piece, two suitcases of over like 30 kilo each. And now it's like one. 23 kilo max, and for the rest you have to pay an, an, an exorbitant amount of money extra, which is totally crazy in my opinion. But uh, so could you imagine in the 80s, it was not about cheapening everything. It was more about enjoying the luxury of everything, enveloping yourself within a dream. And poison, boy, what a dream. Uh, what a dream. And here also you could see it engraved or printed not this is not print this is kind of embossed or grade or whatever you want to call it we also have the pre-reformulated era with the address stating the number 30. so moving on now we get to my favorite piece uh, as far as bottles go the poudre sublime the perfumed dusting powder now can you imagine the luxury again we just saw the perfumed talcum powder, but now we're moving on to the dusting powder. Supreme seduction, Poudre Sublime envelops the body in a light mist of softness, generously perfumed with poison. Now, this is my favorite bottle because it's the biggest one. This is the biggest, biggest, biggest bottle from the poison family. Uh, it's even bigger than the biggest 100 milliliter Esprit de Parfum or compare it with the second biggest bottle, which is the, the body cream, not the body milk. How amazing is this? This is just so, so, so amazing. Uh, and it just, the decadence of it. I mean, to have a talcum powder and a dusting powder. What's the difference? I still am trying to figure that out. Apparently one is more filigrane and dusty than the other. So you open it up and you have your Christian Dior losing stuff here. You have your Christian Dior little uh, poof where you literally, you know, you put your fingers in it like that and then you have it. Oh, it smells divine. It has, it's not a white color. It never was even in the 80s. It, it has always been this light kind of touch of beige yellow gold, like reminiscent of gold color. Uh, they did that on purpose to kind of match the poison look of it all. And then um, this they were planning on making, but they never did, like refills. So you would buy this once and then you get refills. But since we're talking about pure luxury here, this is 200 gram um, of perfume, of uh, dusting powder, you would repurchase the whole thing again. But you get, basically get your 200 gram of powder in here in this beautiful, beautiful container. I'm gonna open it up for you guys. It's gonna go everywhere, I have to be very careful. This thing is worth gold to me because it's so rare. Of course, it's not produced. It's out of production since many, many years. And um, let's try it. I'm going to take a little bit off of the top here. So you see it here. And hmm, I'm not going to put it on the, Eau de Parfum, on the Esprit de Parfum. I'm going to go again here and put it over the talcum. Ah, it's so beautiful. It really smells rich you know, but in a very decadent and baroque way. I mean, Poison to me is the most baroque of perfumes. Uh, the original, again, not just because it's been reformulated that I say it's not like that anymore, but also the, the packaging, the bottles. I mean, look how voluptuous and... What am I doing here? I'm missing the bottom part. There you go. How luxurious this is. Could you imagine entering a bath and then you have all these products standing like in line next to each other 
uh, next to the bathtub or next to the sink or next to the just just your, your, your beauty cabinet or whatever, you know, incredible. So the dusting powder is the most amazing of the pieces. Look how big it is. It's like a gorgeous apple. I bet the evil queen from Disney would be like, wow, Snow White, give me this. I want it. I need it. It's mine. Yes. All right, moving on. <laughs> Jellopal, um, I don't have an example with me, but it is basically, I mean, I have it, but again, it's in the archive somewhere. It is the, the bathing lotion, the shower lotion, perfumed bath and shower gel, a beauty gel intensely perfumed. It's light, fine mousse, bringing out the sparkling freshness of poison on your skin. It's the same packaging. This is the Jellopal as the Talcum. They look the same, basically. And I do have it, I just could not get it out on time for, to make this video. But there you go, there you, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Um, now, let's see what other alternatives have been made. So, Poison was available in a gorgeous 50 milliliter luxury sublime packaging. It was in a hexagon green more package you lift the top and then inside would be this little bottle in 50 ml this is a 30 milliliter version this is the little baby that i used in the video um of the the, the video tag the the perfume hall of fame tag you can check that out too and um this is the 30 ml version then there was a 15 milliliter version a bit smaller you can see and then there were samples in five milliliter versions like that that's the kind of so it's five 15 30 50 and 100 100 was not for sale it was just as a tester this is how vials of poison uh, samples of the eau de toilette used to look like back in the day they actually printed it's very funny they printed a purple layer on the back of the bottle just to give the illusion of the color of the poison bottle. So there you have it. You can see how the purple begins there and then it ends there. It's kind of funny. But these vials contained uh, four milliliters. So much, much, much more than perfume houses give us today. Usually today samples are just one milliliter or one and a half milliliter if you're lucky. Uh, MS still does very generous samples if you go to the MS boutique of their MSons perfumes. Usually you get four to, four to five or even seven milliliter perfume samples there. Granted, they give them to you. Uh, now, what has happened with the House of Dior? I don't know. Everything's going to hell. Everything is going cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Everybody's just trying to cheapen it out as much as possible. As of now, uh, the Christian Dior house does not produce anything from Poison except for the maybe Eau de Toilette or Esprit de Parfum. But as they were transitioning to this cheapness, at a certain point, this beautiful, beautiful soap package and soap turned into this. This is when they homogenized their entire brand. Um, they made the same packages for Dolce Vita, for uh, Hypnotic Poison, uh, for a certain period of time, also Tender Poison was, uh, was it? Yeah, Tender Poison also, wait, I have it here. This one is discontinued since. The little tiny Tender Poisons don't, don't exist anymore. They're very expensive on the secondary market, if you manage to find one. They smell also very nicely, though, I have to say. And so all of them were made with this weird, and this weird shape. And I don't really know what it actually means. So you would have your Poison Christian Dior, and then like I don't know why this would be so flat so you could lay it flat probably and then there's the Dior poison inside it doesn't smell at all like the original soap and you don't have this luxurious cotton tissue with gold anymore you just get a printed piece of paper plasticky looking that says Dior Pour that is the line that they made a couple of years back uh, perfumed soap poison soap that's all now even this has been discontinued. There are no soaps, soaps whatsoever from the poison range. And this flimsy, squishy, plastic, I don't know what to tell you. This, I, I find this ex extremely vulgar compared to, to this. Um, 
Yes. So that was going into cheapness, revolutionizing the brand in a bad way, in my personal opinion. And um, the print on the back says Dior Pour Savon Soap, 150 gram made in France. The original was also 150 gram. Then um, they called all of this, all of these like uh, products for the bath, they, they renamed them into Dior Pour for whatever reason. So the Gel Opal has become the Gel Dior Pour. So hard to see. These purple colors are way difficult to film. Uh, and yeah, that would be the Dior Pour gel. Uh, hydro moisturizing perfumed shower gel, 200 milliliters. <clears throat> Let me take this off and show you guys how it all transformed. Yeah. See the cheapness of it? They basically homogenized everything. All of their perfumes a couple of years back had all the same shape. Uh, I mean, not the, perf the, the, the bath line, the, the, the body lotions and the shower gels all had the same shape, which is really sad. It just kills the identity and the individuality of all these perfumes. So Dolce Vita was in it, Diorella, Diorissimo, Hypnotic Poison, Tender Poison, Poison, Dune, and some other thing I can't even read. Um, but before that transition, uh, there has been a, a period. Now, here's an example of um, the perfumed body lotion uh, in this beautiful, again, not white, but like creamy beige bottle with a gorgeous, look at these hues of purple and gold in the stopper, in the shape of it. It's just amazing. It's like a cabochon or something. Still smells amazing, love it. This was um, kind of the period when they stopped producing, you know, these beautiful bottles and started transitioning into cheaper, but it still had a certain elegance to it. This is still extremely doable in my personal opinion. This is a mess. This is the body lotion. It comes in this non-transparent package. And Dior Tendre, there you have it, milk. And the, yeah, the, the body gel is in these transparent purpley bottles. Or was. Now they discontinued that as well. So that's gone too. Let's smell the perfume. All right. Now let's see. Poison doesn't need too long to develop and become what it, what it is to show its real face. But it definitely... Um, triggers strange emotions. It makes you kind of aggressive and want to, it makes you want to battle something out, but at the same time, it relaxes you. And to me, the Opoponax is the ingredient here, together with the carnation um, and the plum, that kind of make it for me. Those are the three ingredients. Um, You know, Poponux is a very interesting ingredient. It was used by, uh, in, in the past, 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 our ancient, ancient and, 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 and ancestors uh, who would have the money to use a Poponux and to play around with it, would use a Poponux to not banish ghosts or bad creatures, but they would be used mostly to um, bring back visions of our ancestors. Like it's almost, it's almost, it's like a ritual scent and a ritual uh, cleansing in a way. Um, most of these incense -y products are used to kind of, you know, cleanse and clear from ghosts and everything. But this one has an interesting story of, of, of memory. And in fact, I often play with the notion of poison being a memory trigger, of triggering kind of memory patterns from our past, from our DNA that we have thought to have long forgotten, but haven't really. And um, if dosed in the right way and used in the right way, poison can give you these kind of memories or visions of the past. I don't know how to explain it really, except you should really just smell it and try to smell the pre-reformulated version 
to get that full magic of it. And if you add, you know, if you layer things, if you do the soap and then you do the powder, I mean, and then you do the perfume, and then you do the powder, you could like layer it and discover all these facets of poison. And poison is so complex and difficult and complicated. You know, people in the 80s maybe loved it for the wrong reasons. People in the 80s probably loved it because it was pushed to the extreme commercially. It was meant, it was made to be this amazing uh, powerhouse perfume. And so it was just very popular. You had to have it because it was popular. But instead, maybe you should have thought of having it, not because it's very popular, but because of all of the triggers that it has inside of itself, because of everything that it can do to make you think or see or, or, or envision yourself in a different way, because this smell envelops you in such a way, if dosed correctly, um, gives you gives you the feeling of, of, of ease and peace and serenity, believe it or not, even though it's called poison. Maybe it numbs you in a way, it poisons you in a good way because it calms you down a little and it just makes you feel like everything is possible. It makes you feel sexy in a way as well because it is an oriental spicy at the end of the day and uh, we all know that as soon as a label, as a perfume house labels their perfume oriental or spicy or oriental, they're playing with sexuality in some form or another, in one form or another. So this one definitely has it as well. But again, dosing it correctly, you could make poison stay relatively close to the skin because, you know, silage, projection, they're all ginormous. It's been promoted as the perfume that just forever lasting. It never leaves you. People smell you from a kilometer away. But there are ways of tricking that and kind of dosing it correctly of course people are going to sense it on you i mean it's not one of those watery fresh minty lemony scents and citrusy scents we sell we, we smell all over the place it's a different kind of reality it's a different kind of mysterious reality and you need to know how to wear it to be able to pull it off um, poison to me becomes very powdery on the skin but at the same time the apoponax leaves it mysterious and leave keeps it like um, slightly sweet archaic ritual kind of thing. I don't know. I have this ritualistic kind of sense to it. It smells extremely ancient in a way. It, it really does. To me, it triggers that kind of sense of tradition from centuries and centuries ago. Almost like Mesopotamian. That's how far I would, I would go with poison. It's literally the most ancient of perfumes as far as the smell of it goes. To me, it triggers ancient. It triggers, but not ancient in a way young people would make fun of older people. Say, oh my God, you're so ancient. That's all bull shit. Sorry for the word. Because ancient can be a gorgeous word if used properly. Poison can be a gorgeous perfume if dosed properly. So you see, words, it's all about how we put things, how we say things, how we pronounce things, how we decide to express ourselves. This perfume is a very strong way of expressing yourself. And you have to know its heritage and you have to understand the story it brings with itself in order to be able to express yourself correctly with it. So I say if you get a chance, go for it. Um, try to, I don't know, try to figure out um, how, in which way poison suits you. Uh, and I'm sure that there is a possibility of getting pre-reformulated versions. It's really hard to guess. If you're getting like little samples to try them out, it's hard to know. I mean, well, these were produced before the reformulation happened because they're very expensive to produce. They're all glass and they're cute little glass poison bottles. So these, you know, uh, if you get these on secondhand markets, chances are it's a pre-reformulated one, but they do not have the address on them. So you can't be 1000% sure. They did go cheaper on these at a certain point and started producing them in plastic. So be sure to get a glass version of them. So guys, um, what can I say? I'm going to let myself linger on and disappear and envelop myself in the world of poison. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a very long uh, review. I'm sorry if it was too long for some, but uh, that's the beauty of YouTube. You can just stop it whenever you feel like. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, me and my Poison uh, family. Um, leave me comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of Poison and uh, subscribe to my channel, please, if you want to see more. I do post a lot.
every day. 90% of the time every day, unless there's like a short film coming out, then I need like some time to edit it, which is always a mess. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and stay tuned for the next video. Bye.